Yozeli is another Boston game developer, and I didn't know her well before all of this started, but yeah, I certainly knew her professionally. And I was on vacation after I shipped Revolution 60 last year. And you know, this is when Gamergate kind of officially started. I'll get through it as quickly as I can. You probably know the what happened here. But um, you know, basically, long story short, she had a ex-boyfriend release a bunch of hearsay about her private life. You know, some substantiated, starts a blog, and you know, basically has the express goal to destroy her career professionally. So you have an entire internet like fiasco over a woman's private life. Starts with Adam Baldwin, starts a hashtag Gamergate, which kind of these started these viral attack videos against my friend Zoe. And yeah, you know, I actually did a lot of research on this, looking at things that have happened to women in the history of games. What has happened to Zoe? I don't know how you can call it anything, but the most sexist thing that has ever happened to any woman in this field, period. And what makes me angry is the way we whitewashed what happened to Zoe, and now we just dance past it with this BS line about how Gamergate is about ethics and journalism. Gamergate started as a mission to harass my friend Zoe Quinn out of the industry. That was the express goal from the very, very beginning. And let's just be clear and accurate about this. So, you know, from here, I remember immediately after this piece was published, after, you know, Adam Baldwin starts with his sexist crap, I remember going to PAX and, you know, like, I remember people, like, threatening to wear t-shirts to, like, harass her in person at PAX Prime this year. It's like, the entire goal from the beginning is to harass Zoe out of video games. You know, and from here, it just starts going after women one by one, harassing us out of the industry. Um, we lost Jen Frank. Jen Frank has been a really long-time writer. She's been in the industry forever. They start attacking her, her Twitter explodes. There's a certain point where you go, why am I doing this? Why am I here? Why keep doing this? They run the playbook. It's the same thing over and over and over. Attack the woman, discredit the woman, make the woman a controversy, attack her looks, attack her love life, attack anything until she just quits. Again, they did it to her. They did it to my friend Maddie Bryce. <coughs> they tried to do it to Catherine Cross. Lee Alexander, she wrote a very fair piece talking about how games are changing and the idea of this gamer identity is over. They went after her. And Total Biscuit this morning was attacking Lee Alexander like for no reason whatsoever, just because it's fun to harass women. This is the playbook. They go after us, they harass us, they harangue us until they quit. I'm not going to tell you who this is from, but this came in, yeah, October of this year. And this is from one of the women I've just talked to you about. She was saying this, we're going to lose Gamergate. Guys, we are currently losing this. We are hemorrhaging women. Women are quitting. If we do end up winning this, this is going to be a really pair victory. You know, Intel very famously kind of caved into their demands. And, you know, <clears throat> they, it was just like this entire sea change was going forward. And these people were winning this war. And this is where we kind of are when it comes to where I am in the story. Um, I was really mad. I just was not going to take this anymore. So this is how I kind of got involved at Gamergate. Um, this all started with a fan of my show, Isometric, on 5x5, Five Five, um, took some of my quotes about um, I had been a little outspoken on Gamergate, not in a huge way, took some of the, uh, the things I had tweeted and made a meme about them. Um, kind of gentle quotes, all of these are actors kind of making fun of Gamergaters. Um, but what they ended up doing was they took this, and because I made fun of Gamergate, they spent an entire day um, kind of taking this meme and turning it around to attack me with. Um, they made up vicious lies about me, they made up a lie that the child in this picture is autistic, and that I was making fun of autistic people. They threatened to rape me. They threatened to murder me. 
they started going after me, my husband, um, my company, and it scared the hell out of me when this happened. Um, I was actually, you can go listen to the isometric show the night before it happened, and my voice was shaking because I was so terrified of these people. And I just stayed off the internet. And I came back the next day, and this is going to have some language, so I apologize. But, um, you know, I slept on it, I got my nerve back, I went for a run. And I came back the next day, and I said, fuck you. you know, I'm not going anywhere. You know, you're not going to bully me. I don't care if you attack me. I just say in no uncertain terms. I drew a line in the sand and I said, I'm not going to let you run this playbook on me the way you've run it on my friends. And this is where it got really bad for me. Um, I was watching the HCM chat room where they were kind of orchestrating these attacks on me. And you know they started investigating me, my life, my company, where I live. And I actually watched them dox me live. And you could read this kind of famous death threat that they sent me. Um, guess what, bitch? I know where you live. They dox me. I've got a K-bar. I'm coming to your house so I can shove it up your ugly feminist cunt. I'm going to rape your filthy ass until, until you bleed, then choke you to death with your husband's tiny Asian penis. Uh, your mutilated corpse will be on the front page of Jezebel tomorrow, and there isn't jack shit you can do about it. If you have any kids, they're going to die too. I don't give a fuck. They'll be feminists anyway. I hope you enjoy your last moments alive on this earth. You have nothing worthwhile with your life. Yeah, this is the moment, it's again, it's a moment of like character. I think anyone, if this were sent to you with your address right there, it would kind of scare the hell out of you. And I didn't stay silent. The reason I chose not to stay silent comes back to that Facebook post that I showed you. Um, I thought about that so much where that person was talking about how we were losing this fight. What I was really frustrated about was our media in game journalism uh, was choosing to stay completely silent on this issue. Um, IGN would not cover Gamergate, would not cover what happened to Zoe. The men of that staff didn't think it was important. Don't write about it. Game Informer, silence. Giant bomb, silence. See no evil, hear no evil. No one wants to talk about what's going on with women in the industry. And I said, God damn it. If they're not going to get it done, I am going to get it done. And you can go look at the media that I did afterwards. Um, yeah, I went on a press assault. Um, that tweet ended up going mega viral and people started inviting me on their shows. Um, you can see me in these clips, and I am barely holding it together. My hair is frazzled, I'm not sleeping from stress, and I like reach down inside myself for that little bit of strength that I had to kind of pull it together to tell what was happening to industry women to the world. I went on MSNBC, CNN, PBS, BBC, repeatedly, NPR, Guardian. I just did media after media, after media, after media, after media. I cannot stress this enough. I was barely holding it together psychologically at that point. I had to get this done because game journalism was silent. I had to do that because men of this field were choosing to do nothing. And I realized if someone didn't stand up to these bullies, we were going to keep on hemorrhaging women. It was the hardest thing I've ever done in my entire life. Yeah, you know, the we'll get back more into the saga of Gamergate, but I think this is a really important point to, to take a moment. And ask yourself, like Gamergate, where does Gamergate come from? What is the real problem with Gamergate? You know, something people tell me all the time is it's like it's like a bunch of 12-year-old trolls. Like that's what people like to think. I disagree with that, not just because the average age of a gamer is now 37. I think that Gamergate is just a symptom of a disease in our industry. And I think the disease is, you know, white straight male gamers have been made the center of the universe for 30 freaking years in our industry. They're always the hero. Um, you can look back to the culture of the NES in the 80s. 
You can look at like the iconography or Captain N or the way that they have the posters there. It's never a woman there. It's always this white male player that's there as the hero. And that figure has been the center of gaming for 30 years. They've catered to every single adolescent male fantasy. Rescuing a girl, getting like being so hyper awesome math macho that you end up like, you know, sex object, getting catered to by women. Like, you know, people like to blast Jupiter Ascending, which I think is very correctly labeled like a, um, someone threw $100 million at a 14-year-old, you know, girl on Tumblr's blog. <laughs> yeah, I think that's very fair. But that is literally what, you know, the culture of games have been for 30 years, like catering to every single whim of this very specific kind of player. So you have the game, you know, you have basically the publishers that repeatedly look at Assassin's Creed. Look how many Assassin's Creed games there have been. The only game that stars a woman is on Vita. It's honestly not very good. They keep like making it for this one type of consumer, and the woman is barely present. So then you look at who is reviewing the games. You know, from the beginning, game journalism has been the domain of men. Men dominate this field. Men <coughs> tend to evaluate all the games that we do critically. And these men do not really bring feminist critiques to the table. I can't tell you how many times I've played a game where there's some like giant breasted damsel in distress in the game, and it just goes completely unremarked on by the men that are reviewing it. So the people that are evaluating the culture have consequences for everyone else. So, you know, when we look at Gamergate, I see, I kind of honestly see these people as victims. I see them as people that have kind of been raised in this sewage, and they've kind of grown up, and they have this really aggressive, angry attitude in ways that they don't understand because of that. If you talk to a gamer gator, it's really clear that they're terrified their culture is going to be taken away. I did a story during lunch. Um, I was talking about growing up in Mississippi and how Trent Lott um, did this very famous push poll. Not push poll, poll. Um, and they were trying to figure out a message to run on in an election. And this one question test through the roof. Um, and the question was like something to give to the voter. Uh, Democrats are trying to take away your culture. And they wanted to see how people would respond to this. That question tested through the roof with voters. Like white males just responded crazily aggressively to that question. And what that question was able to do was kind of incite this, this anger or this fear inside of you know, these southerners that they were going to have their culture taken away. And I think in that same way, Gamergate is kind of tapping into a certain kind of consumer that bases their identity on being a gamer. Like, I love video games, but I don't think of myself primarily as a gamer. That's not my identity. I see myself as a leader. I see myself as an entrepreneur. Yeah, I see myself as a wife. But, I, you know, gamer, it's a hobby for me. I think for a certain kind of consumer, you know, it really taps into their identity, and they need that to be that. You know, I think they're terrified it's going to be taken away. So before I play this video, um, you know, this is kind of getting back to my story. I want to tell you guys, legally, I'm unable, I realize there's some controversy about this particular person right now that's been in the press. I can tell you I'm unable to comment on this legally, but I can't show you the video. Oh, you this is Jay's right here, and this is my fucking car. This was, oh, we'll come back to it. You know, this was sent to me, uh, what was it, a few months ago, a month ago, but basically kind of escalating this intimidation that I've gotten. I've had now 47 death threats to me sent in the last, um, you know, just the last five months. So this is kind of one of the worst of them. I'm gonna play it for you. I want you to imagine what it was like sitting there and getting this sent to you because this person sent me messages earlier in the day saying he was en route to my house with weapons. Oh, you two, this is Jay's right here, and this is my fucking car, or my mom's car, that when I was straight racing, could not be far. Fucking fall and roll, and now the bitch shit is crushed. Okay, I can't get the ratio because it's made of bullshit plastic from Chase. And those, I was eating fucking drugs, and just racing, you know, like normal. I was trying to straight racing with fucking armor. And look at this bull